In this video, I'm going to discuss the advanced features in the interface PNP with the 3.0.3W firmware. Um, two of the features I'm going to be talking about is the RPM based traction control and the progressive uh, gear based boost control. The first thing we'll discuss is the uh, RPM based traction control. We'll go here to the anti rev settings. This is turned on now. We have an anti rev curve table. And basically, what this does is you set the threshold RPMs. Once it goes past this threshold RPMs per second, it goes into this table and starts reading it. And this is boost duty by RPM per second. And what this will do is this will reduce the boost duty once the RPMs per second go past the threshold. And if you'll watch as I go up through the RPMs you'll see it pull boost out. You can adjust how sensitive it is, how fast it updates through the code there. You can adjust the threshold of when it can come into the table here the higher you set this number the longer it takes for the firmware to update itself so it will actually pull more out and it will keep it out a little longer than the smaller you make that number it also depends on where you have your initial table ramp set to. You set a steep ramp, of course, it'll pull out more and more aggressively. I have two different versions of this uh, RPM based traction control. I have another version that uh, retards ignition timing. Uh, but for the turbo bikes, I'm not sure it'll work so great because uh, when you retard ignition timing, it also builds boost. So um, I think the reduction in uh, boost duty is the better route to go. But we'll see how it works. And I may even change the firmware to um, incorporate both at the same time or the choice between both of them. But that's how the tra uh, RPM based traction control works. If we go over here, we turn on launch control. Now that our boost is turned on, uh, you turn your boost control on in this window here. We can go over here and turn launch control on and launch boost target duty. And what this is, is when the launch control is active, the boost control will go to this duty cycle here. So when I push the clutch in, you'll see the boost duty goes to 35% what I have in the window. When I release the clutch, it'll follow the progressive map that's attached to first gear. So when I release it, you'll watch the boost duty climb up. I'm going to push the clutch in again. Goes back to 35, release the clutch, starts over. You can set this to zero and it will apply 0% duty cycle. Or you can set it to whatever your first progressive ramp starts at. So if we went to advanced boost duty delay tables, we can set it to whatever the first ramp started out as. Which would be the first dot here is 10. We can set it to 10. When we apply the clutch, it'll go to 10, release it, it'll start at 10, and go up from there. There's another feature it's scramble boost and what this will do is, is apply an extra 20% duty cycle to the boost duty. It will apply it to the overall boost duty so no matter where it's at in the ramp as soon as you toggle the input it will add an extra 20% or whatever you put in this window. 
So if we put a 5 in that window, it will apply a 5. This input is attached. Uh, you can actually pick which input it is. But it, I prefer to use the nitrous input on the uh, interface PMP as it will take a 12 volt input and you can hook this to the flash to pass button or the high beam and when you turn it on you'll see the extra 5% applied if I put 10 you'll see 10% applied and this applies to the total ramp so if I push the clutch in and I release it I can push it at any time and it will apply that to the ramp you'll see it jumping around there that's because I'm pushing the button the input I'll push it again and I'll just let it go by itself without pushing it and you'll see it's smooth the ramp is if I push it again and then push the button you'll see it jump back and forth because it's applying that 10 percent every time I push the button and this does it for every ramp and any gear so it's just an added little um, external way to add some boost uh, in a hurry if you need to. This is the progressive tables and basically to activate these you have to have the launch control active. It has to be turned on. It doesn't have to be active but it has to be turned on. If you turn launch control off it grays out the boost time from launch <clears throat> and that is what these tables are so this has to be on then you can uh, turn on the boost time from launch tables you pick the solenoid frequency pick your output set it to open loop hit burn close and then you can use the progressive ramps now to select which gear is going to use which table you can open up the boost duty gear settings turn this on and here is the three windows to select which gear is going to use which table the first table is always attached to first gear but more gears can use this first table also so you could have first and second use this table then third use this table fourth use this table and fifth and sixth use this table you could change it to where first second and third use the first table fourth use this table fifth use this table and sixth use this table so you can kind of move it around uh, to suit your needs there's only enough room in the memory right now for four tables but I may expand it at a later date to five or even six possibly uh, but for right now it's going to stay at four tables to set each ramp you just grab the dot and move it to wherever in the map or you can click the box and select your duty cycle and your time as soon as you push in the clutch it'll start at the first data point in the map when you release the clutch it will start at this data point go to the next one and the next one then the next one until it finally ends the ramp it will hold this value until the gear change is made until it till whatever gear uses the next table so if you have it set to where first second and third uses this table it will hold this last percent value if the ramp runs out whatever gear until the next gear is applied that uses this table and then the next then this table will take over from there so if we set this to 40 I'll release the clutch it'll go through the ramp till it reaches 40 you can watch it down here it's at 40 now I'll make the gear change and it'll go to the next ramp because I have in that table 
I set second gear to use this table, third gear to use this table, fourth, fifth, and sixth to use the last table. I'll make the next gear change and it'll go to the next table. And finally, for fourth, fifth, and sixth, we'll use the last table. And no matter if you change to fifth or sixth in the middle of the ramp, it will not matter. It will continue the ramp till it finishes. If it goes to neutral, it will default to the first table, to the maximum of the first table. So in between gear shifts, if a shift is missed, it will just automatically default to the max on the last table. I may change this around to where if it's in neutral, it will automatically default to 0% duty cycle. Um, but for right now, I think we'll leave it like it is. But that's basically how you set the boost control up. Another thing in the uh, boost control duty table, if you'll set this first row to zeros, this will keep the solenoid off anything below the first RPM cell point you set here. So if you set this to 6,000, if the RPMs come under 6,000 RPM, this will keep the solenoid off. Once it goes past 6,000 RPM, it will go into the map and it will start reading boost duty. Now the way this works, we put 100% in this table and the boost duty delay table is a percentage of this table. I set this up so that we could have a row that would turn the boost duty off at a certain percent at a certain RPM. Instead of just having a uh, regular window where you set the RPM point, I thought I would just leave this table here and just make the duty the duty tables, the progressive tables, a percentage of this. So basically if we have 40% of 100 we have 40% duty cycle. So it's pretty easy to set up. And really these RPM set points on the bottom doesn't really matter. They, they're, the break points don't matter because you're setting it to 100 through the whole table anyway. The column on the side is gear. There is closed loop boost control, but it's not progressive. It's strictly just a boost control target table. Um, I haven't used it on any bikes because it's not progressive. I don't have any immediate plans to even add a closed loop boost control. Um, it may be something in the future, but I, I really doubt that I will add anything that's closed loop. That's pretty much it for this video I'm going to make some more videos real soon that have uh, some more features show the basic tables um, tuning uh, and other little window other little uh, features of the software thank you and please check out my other videos